بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا آمين So continuing with this journey through some of the selected du'as and dhikr in this great book Hisn al-Muslim, the fortress of a Muslim We've come to the du'a now pertaining to what does a person say when they take off their clothes ما يقول إذا وضع ثوبه What does a person say when they take off their clothes? They say بسم الله Okay أولا لفظ الحديث Firstly looking at the wording of the hadith and this is collected by Imam Tabarani from Anas ibn Malik رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم So this companion Anas ibn Malik he narrates from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم saying that the Prophet said ستر ما بين أعين الجن وأورات بني آدم إذا وضعوا ثيابهم أن يقولوا بسم الله That the screening between the aura of the children of Adam that which shouldn't be shown from the body of the children of Adam between them and the jinn when one of them take their clothes off is that they should say Bismillah and we have also from Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu Satru ma bayna ayyul jinn wa awrati bani Adam idda dakhala ahadum al khala an yaqula Bismillah that the covering and the screen between one of the children of Adam and the shayateen when they enter into the bathrooms is that they should say Bismillah and this hadith is in Tirmidhi so the wording Bismillah we say it when we take off our clothes and we say it when we go into the bathrooms because we want to be protected from Allah by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Imam Sa'di rahimahullah may Allah mercy upon him he say when you say Bismillah what you're saying is abtadi'u bi kulli ismin lillahi ta'ala you're saying that I'm starting whatever I'm doing this action with all of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as barakah okay not just the name Allah but with all of the names and then he gives a grammatical understanding as to why this is the case he says which basically means unless you understand Arabic Arabic you won't understand the breakdown grammatically but he's saying that basically the construction of bismillah is mudaf mudaf ilay and it's uh, mufrad so it encompasses all of the other names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the hadith we had the word sitr sitr was the hijab or the the barrier the covering between you and the shayateen okay so it's like a hijab and Imam al-Mannawi may Allah have mercy upon him he said ذَلِكَ لِأَنَّ إِسْمَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى كَالطَّابَعَ عَلَى بَنِي آدَمْ فَلَا يَسْتَطِيُوا الْجِنْ فَكَّهُ he says that is the case why is it a screen between you and the children and the shayateen the devils when you take off your clothes or when you go into the bathroom why is it a screen by saying bismillah is because it's like a stamp or like a seal that Allah has put between you and the devils you and the shayateen when you say bismillah and they are unable to break through it they're unable to break through it so saying bismillah when you take off your clothes or when you go into the bathroom is something extremely important so what do we benefit from the hadith? The Shaykh he says kanif. He said it's legislated for you to say Bismillah when you want to go into the bathroom And also when you want to uncover yourself when you're in the bathroom So we have in the hadith of Ali that we mentioned and the wisdom al-hikmah min thalik huwa al-isti'ana billah and the wisdom from saying Bismillah is that you want aid and protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala كَيْ لَا يَطْلَعَ الشَّيْطَانَ عَلَىٰ أَوْرَةِ الْعَبْدِ حَالَ قَضَائِهِ لِحَاجَتِهِ So that the shayateen, they're unable to see the aura, the private parts of the worshippers when they are relieving themselves or when they are undressing. So it's extremely important to say Bismillah. So some people they have the habit when they're in their bedrooms and the bathrooms and they undress themselves, they have a habit of staring at themselves for a long time. So basically they're undressed for a period of time that they don't need to be undressed for. And they undress beyond the need of being naked, being unclothed. And this is problematic. Why? Because if you don't say this Bismillah and you don't have this protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then some of the devil, some of the shayateen, they can stare at you, they can observe you, and maybe they may become fascinated by you, by the beauty or the, or the handsome nature that you have. And one of them may fall in love with you and this can cause you a world of problems. So staying clothed, as the ulama mentioned, unless there is a real need for you to be unclothed, 
is from good manners and it's something which is highly recommended. So even if you're alone, even if you're with your spouse, if there's no need for you to be undressed and unclothed, you shouldn't be unclothed, you should be covered. And also bearing in mind, as we said, it's extremely important to say Bismillah, seeking Allah's protection. Also a point that is mentioned, Al-Muslimu abdunillahi fi kulli ahwalihi. So the Muslim, the believer, he or she is a slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all of their situations. They remember that they need Allah's protection and Allah's guidance wherever they may be in any situation they may be. One may be thinking, SubhanAllah, I'm just taking my clothes off. I'm just going into the bathroom. But look, even in these issues which are mundane, we have ways to make them into acts of worship and ways to protect ourselves from them. So this is a true blessing from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala that He's given us guidance in every single thing that we do. In fact, the hadith of Salman al-Farsi Rahimahullah Ta'ala um, the Quraysh, the kuffar of the Quraysh in the time of the Prophet وسلم, they were making fun of this companion saying that your Prophet even teaches you how to go to the bathroom, what kind of religion is this? So Salman, instead of becoming embarrassed as we would in this time where we're pressured to be embarrassed about Islam, Salman, he stood up with all confidence and said yes, he teaches us that when we go to the bathroom we should say Bismillah, we should enter with our left foot, we should clean ourselves with our left hand, we shouldn't use this or that. So Salman, he was very happy with the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even in issues pertaining to going to the bathroom, and, is that, and that is how we should be. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, as his conveyor, hasn't left anything that we require in our lives or that can bring us benefit in this dunya and bring us benefit in the hereafter, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught it to us through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and this is a great joy, something that we should truly feel confident with and happy with and uh, we should have pleasure in that matter. Also, the, from the hadith or from saying this dua and um, the hadith surrounding this dua, saying Bismillah when you get undressed and when you go to the bathroom, إِثْبَاتْ وَجُودُ الْجِنْ وَالشَّيَاطِينَ is that it affirms for us that there are such a creation known as the jinn and the shayateen, okay, the devils. وَأَنَّهُمْ يَطَّلِعُونَ عَلَى بَنِي آدَمْ وَبَنُوا آدَمْ لَا يَرَوْنَهُمْ and they are able to see the children of Adam and the children of Adam are not able to see them as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-A'raf إِنَّهُ يَرَاكُمْ هُوَ وَقَبِيلُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا تَرَوْنَهُمْ إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا شَيَاطِينَ أَوْلِيَاءَ لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Verily him, the shaytan, and his tribe, meaning his offspring, can see you from where you are unable to see them. Verily we had made the devils, okay? Uh, allies to those who do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to those who do not have faith. So the point being that they are able to see us and observe us if we don't seek the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and of course this is something that we don't want to happen. The next dua which is the same dua in reality, dua dukhul al-khala, the dua that you say when entering into the bathroom. So you say Bismillah, the starting of it is Bismillah. And then you say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al khubthi wal khabaith. After saying Bismillah, you say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al khubthi wal khabaith. Okay, this hadith can be found uh, narrated by Imam Bukhari, uh, sorry, collected by Imam Bukhari, and the narrator is Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu anhu, who said, Kana nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ida dakhla al khala qal, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al khubthi wal khabaith. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he would enter into the bathroom, the place to relieve himself, he would say these words, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al khubthi wal khabaith. So what does this mean? Inni a'udhu bika. Allahumma, we know from the previous classes that it means that we are calling upon Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala with all of his beautiful names. Inni a'udhu bika. Ay alja'u wa astajiru wa attahassan billahi wahdahu. Meaning that I turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his protection and for him to protect me from all harm and I do that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Okay, inni a'udhu bika, O oh Allah, I am seeking refuge with, with you from all harm and I'm not going to anybody else to seek refuge because only you, Allah azawajal, can give me this refuge that I require and that I seek after. Min al khubthi. This word khubthi is jami al khabith. You read the dukan shayatin. Dukran shayatin. So you say a'udhu bika. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al khubthi. Khubthi. It is the referring to the male devils, the male shayatin. And the next word al khabaith is referring to the female shayatin. 
So in essence, you are basically saying, oh Allah, protect me from all types of devils that may be able to harm me without your protection. What do we benefit from the hadith also? We notice, number one, تمام حرص النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ورئاياته لأمته بتعليمهم هذه الآداب We notice how the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was so concerned for his followers in the sense that he would always want good for them صلى الله عليه وسلم by teaching us these kinds of manners and by making us aware of such situations uh, wherein we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection and guidance. The Prophet sallallahu wouldn't leave out anything that would benefit us as we mentioned in this world or the hereafter except that he would teach us it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about him as a description in the Quran in Surah Tawbah لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُمْ حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَأُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ Verily has come to you, O people, a messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a prophet from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from amongst yourselves and it is azizun alayhi it is very difficult upon him anything that you suffer from difficulty harisun alaykum he's always so eager for you to benefit from good bil mu'minina ra'ufur rahim with the believers he's also always full of mercy and kindness so that is one of the benefits that we take from these ahadith these duas that we've looked at so far is that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was so concerned with teaching us and guiding us to that which benefits us not only in this world but also in the hereafter. Another point إذا كان القضاء الحاجة في صحراء أو مكان غير معاد لذلك فإن ذكر يقال حالة تشميل الثياب وهو مذهب الجمهور. That the majority of the scholars they say that if you're going to relieve yourself in a place which is not designated as a bathroom for you to relieve yourself in, for example, if you're on a journey and you had to uh, use the outside for the call of nature then you don't lift your clothing up until number one you are far away from the people and number two when you are close to the ground about to relieve yourself so before that you don't lift your clothing up and this teaches us that subhanallah how careful islam is about protecting the shyness of both the men and the women that we shouldn't be a people that do such things of undressing or relieving ourselves in front of other people easily like you find in some countries especially in the West, people have no problem relieving themselves uh, one in front of the other and they may even watch each other, sorry for being explicit, and they may even find that funny and strain, uh, funny. So Islam teaches us beautiful etiquettes and it teaches us that we should have shyness and we should be proud of that shyness wherever we are able to have it. Also we benefit from what we've taken, الشياطين لا تسكن إلا الأماكن المستقدرة التي لا يذكر فيها اسم الله That the shayateen, they love to um, populate and they love to be in places which are filthy like the bathrooms okay and the toilets so if you do not seek Allah's protection by saying the bismillah and the dua that we mentioned Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al khubthi wal khaba'ithi when entering into the bathroom then you can be harmed by these devils who love to be in such filthy places so having Allah's protection is very important and sadly there is a huge market these days for what is known as the ruqya Ruqya is exorcism in the Islamic way, removing the, the possession of devils uh, and jinn from human beings, from Muslims. And um, if there's a big market for it and it can be avoided uh, very much if people were to follow the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ and the teachings found within Islam. If we were to protect ourselves regularly, keep ourselves in wudu, keep ourselves around the Quran and the dhikr, then the shayateen, they wouldn't be able to harm us with Allah's permission. So after having mentioned what we say when we take our clothes off, which is Bismillah, and then we mentioned also what we say when we go into the bathroom, we say Allahumma inni a'udhu bikam la khubti wal khabaith. We now mention the next dua is that what do you say when you come out of the bathroom? Dua al khuruj min al khala. What is to be said when you come out of the bathroom? What you say very simply is gufranak. You say the simple words gufranak. So the hadith, awlan, lafz al-hadith, the hadith is from Aisha radiyallahu anha, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kana idha kharaja min al-ghaid, qal ghufranak, wa hada lafz, lafz Abi Dawood. So collected by Imam Abi Dawood from the mother of the believers, Aisha radiyallahu anha, who said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he used to leave, having finished relieving himself, when he would leave the place wherever he relieved himself, he would say ghufranak. Okay, Gufranak, a as Aluka Gufranaka, Ladi 
يترتب عليه ستر الذنب ستر الذنب أو الله سبحانه وتعالى I'm asking you your forgiveness غفرانك means Allah I'm seeking forgiveness from you to the extent that my sins will be covered okay no there will be no effect left of my sins so when you say غفرانك you are seeking from Allah Azza wa Jal that he pardons you overlooks your sins and he raises the effects of your sins الخطابي وغيره Imam al-Khatabi and others from them, they gave a reason as to why we say ghufranak when coming out of the place of relieving ourselves. So they said, في سبب قوله هذا الذكر صلى الله عليه وسلم في هذا الموتن قولان He said that there are two opinions as to why we say this word, Oh Allah forgive us after having relieved ourselves. أحدها أحدهما إنه استغفر من ترك الذكر الله تعالى حالا لبثه على الخلاء وكان لا يحجر ذكر الله تعالى إلا إن ذا الحاجة ونحوها So one of the explanations given as to why we say oh Allah forgive me غفرانك is that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would do this because for the period of time that he was in the bathroom relieving himself he left alone the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he wanted to seek forgiveness for having done that because it was from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم's sunnah as mentioned كان يذكر الله تعالى على كل أحيان على كل أحيانه that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would remember Allah عز وجل in all of his situations. So in this situation, in going to the bathroom, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم wouldn't be able to remember Allah عز وجل. So he would seek forgiveness from Allah سبحانه وتعالى for that. Another opinion given is that إنه استغفر خوفا من من تقصيره في شكر نعمة الله التي أنعمها عليه. Okay. Another opinion is that the Prophet ﷺ would seek forgiveness from Allah because he was unable to fully, and of course we more so, the Prophet ﷺ and us are unable to fully thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the huge gift of being able to relieve ourselves. Anybody who has constipation knows that it's a serious situation and there are situations, diseases worse than constipation, that you can eat your food and it may not function the way it should function and come out as it's supposed to come out can cause you a lot of problems so this is a huge blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we can eat our food and then it's digested we take the nutrients from our food and then we are able to relieve ourselves in an easy way unlike many people who have sicknesses and they are unable to do that so we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but our thanks is never enough that's why according to this opinion we seek forgiveness from Allah azawajal. so the first opinion we said for saying gufranak, for saying oh Allah forgive me or forgive us is that because in the bathroom situation we don't remember Allah so there's a period of our life wherein we are not remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we're seeking Allah's forgiveness for that period where we don't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the second opinion is that because we are unable to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the perfect way that we should so therefore we seek Allah's forgiveness again for not being able to thank him there is a third opinion which is very beautiful but before I mention it would anybody love like to hazard a guess as to what it may be so giving yourselves an opportunity to interact does anybody want to think as to what may be the third opinion as to why we do not say this uh, we do not say anything with regards to Allah's name in the bathroom sorry astaghfirullah why we say gufranak once we've come out of the bathroom why we seek allah's forgiveness once we've come out of the bathroom what what could be a third opinion no okay not a problem so the third opinion as mentioned by shaykh uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala in sharh al mumtah and he narrates this opinion from imam ibn al-qayyim and others which is that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us to say gufranak oh allah i seek your forgiveness after having come out of the bathroom because as you have physically removed the filth from your body which is what the food that you ate and after it's digested that filth needs to be removed from your body now you want to think about the spiritual filth that you want to remove from yourself so you say Allah I seek forgiveness from you so it's something which is munasib it's something which is appropriate okay you've removed and you've been given the gift of being able to remove the physical filth from yourself now you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove for you, from you also the spiritual filth that you have from the sins and the mistakes that we have made against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we say ghufranik, which means oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please forgive us. Tayyip. 
ما يستفاد من الحديث what can we benefit also from this hadith ما كان عليه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من تمام تعلق قلبه بذكر الله تعالى ومحبته وطلب مغفرته it shows us how the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم his heart would always be attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he would love to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he would have a love especially in seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the more a person knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there was nobody who knew Allah azawajal more than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the more Allah knows the more a person knows the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his magnificence and his majesty the more a person wants to come close to Allah azawajal through seeking forgiveness of Allah Azza wa Jal and uh, loving to do so. Secondly, تنزيه الله Azza wa Jal من أن يذ من أن يذكر في مثل هذه الأماكن ولو برد السلام. And also, we learn from this hadith uh, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us not to mention Allah Azza wa Jal in the bathroom, but rather when we leave the bathroom, we seek forgiveness from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Is that we learn that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has such a high status? Is that it's wrong to transgress against the state of, of Allah Azawajal by mentioning his name in places which are not befitting for his name to be mentioned like the bathroom for example okay and also yukrahu italat al mukth ba'd al qada al haja li sababain it's also disliked to stay in the bathroom after you have completed what you need to complete whether you are having a bath or whether you are relieving yourself for reasons from them is that anna fi dalika kashfan lil awrati bil haja is that you will be uncovering your private parts for that for for um wherein there is no need for you to do so so once you finish your business in the bathroom the shower etc there's no need for you now to parade around the house or to stay in the bathroom uncovered it's good for us to cover ourselves and to leave places like the bathroom and the toilet after we have used them Secondly, أنا المراحيد معوى الشياطين والنفوس الخبيثة معوى الشياطين والنفوس الخبيثة That these places like the bathrooms and the toilets are like residencies or places where the devils and the shayateen tend to be occupied, tend to occupy them. So we shouldn't be from those people that once we've relieved ourselves, we sit in the bathroom reading our favorite paper or magazine or scrolling through the phone none of this should be done rather you go and you do your business and you leave طيب, we move on inshallah and we're going to mention dhikr qabl al wudu what do we say before making the wudu we say bismillah so bismillah has come up so often in today's class and we see that it's mentioned in so many different places in the sharia so dhikr qabl al wudu what you say before making wudu, you say Bismillah. Sharh al-Hadith, Afwan. Awwal al al-Hadith. Firstly, the wording of the Hadith. And Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu, qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la salata liman lam, liman la wudu'a lahu, wa la wudu'a liman lam yathkur ismullahi ta'ala alayhi. There is no prayer, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, as narrated by Abu Hurairah, there is no prayer for the one that doesn't have wudu. And there is no wudu for the one that doesn't mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning doesn't say Bismillah. And this hadith is collected by Imam Ahmad. Another hadith pertaining to this matter is the hadith narrated by Abi Sa'id al Khudri radiallahu anhu, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, La wudu'a, la wudu'a, liman lam yadkur ismallahi ta'ala alayhi. There is no wudu for the one that didn't mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the wudu. And this was collected by Imam ibn Majah. So both of the hadith, they're saying the same thing. They're saying that we should mention Bismillah when we're making the wudu. طيب, Bismillah, أي أبتدئ وضوئي متبركا Bismillah راجيا القبول والسداد. I do this action that I'm doing wudu or any other action when I say Bismillah, I'm saying this because I want to have baraka and assistance and I want my action to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I want it to be correct. So when you say Bismillah, you are making isti'ana billah, billah, isti'ana billah. You are seeking aid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're seeking barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do a thing. So that's why we say Bismillah before we make the wudu and before we do any other action. Ma yustafad min al-hadith, what do we benefit? At-tasmiyatu indal wudu mustahabbatun wa huwa madhab al-jumhur. 
that to say Bismillah is something which is mustahab, meaning it's recommended, it's not obligatory, according to the majority of the scholars. وَإِنْدَ إِمَامَ أَحْمَدْ تَجِيُّ مَعَ الذِّكْرِ وَتَسْقُطْ مَعَ النِّسْيَانِ But with the, the madhab and the opinion of Imam Ahmad and his school of thought, is that it's something which is obligatory as long as you remember it. And if you, if you forgot it, then it's okay, there's nothing upon you. But if you can remember, it's obligatory upon you to say the Bismillah when you make the wudu. Secondly, مَنْ نَسْيَ تَسْمِيَ فِي أَوْلِ الْوَدُوْ ثُمَّ ذَكَرَ فِي أَثْنَائِهِ سَمَّ وَلَا إِعَادَةَ عَلَيْهِ That whoever forgets saying Bismillah at the beginning of the wudu, that whenever they remember it, in the midst of making wudu, at any point they remember to say Bismillah, they say it and they continue with the wudu, they do not have to go back to the beginning. Okay, They do not have to go back to the beginning. Um, we'll stop here inshallah because we've taken quite a bit. And um, if you have any questions or clarifications that are needed, uh, feel free. Wa jazakumullah khair wa sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Anything which was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The shortcomings, imperfections and mistakes were from myself and shaitan May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward everybody immensely who made the effort to attend And may Allah make it easy for us to understand, memorize and implement Ameen